Hi, this is John Persinos, Editorial Director of Investing Daily. Welcome to my video presentation for Tuesday, June 20. To view our full range of trading services and publications, visit our website at investingdaily.com. Also visit the website of our subsidiary, streetauthority.com. I derive pleasure and wisdom from reading Buddhist philosophy. One of the tenets of Buddhism is the wisdom of non-action. At times, doing nothing can carry considerable significance. Last week, the Federal Reserve did nothing. It was a wise move. At the conclusion of its two-day meeting last Wednesday, the Fed's policymaking arm, the Federal Open Market Committee, the FOMC, refrained from adjusting interest rates for the first time in over a year, maintaining its policy rate following 10 consecutive hikes, totaling 5%. I consider the decision to be appropriate, given the decreasing trend in inflation and the indications of a weakening economy. In my view, this doesn't signify the end of rate hikes, but rather presents an opportunity for the Fed to assess inflation and economic conditions before making any further moves. I anticipate that the Fed will continue to emphasize its commitment to curbing inflation and preventing significant loosening of financial conditions that could reignite inflationary pressures. As you can see from this chart, the Fed funds rate currently hovers between 5% and 5.25%. According to the latest projections of analysts, over the long term, the Fed funds rate is projected to trend around 4.75% in 2024 and 3.50% in 2025. The recent surge in the stock market has gained momentum partly due to expectations of a less aggressive approach by the Fed. While I don't believe that the market will completely relinquish recent gains, I do anticipate some temporary setbacks arising from shifting expectations regarding the Fed's actions and incoming economic and earnings data. However, I believe long-term investors can take advantage of these conditions by purchasing during market dips and proactively adjusting their portfolios. The Fed's inaction last week cheered investors, driving higher the U.S and international indices. The S&P 500 and NASDAQ are both officially in a new bull market. Market breadth is improving as the New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Line, the NYAD, continues to hover above its 50 and 100 day moving averages. Although the central bank's decision was expected, it was far from an obvious one, considering that the initial reason for the rate hikes was high inflation, which has not yet been completely eliminated. However, significant progress has been made in this regard, justifying the Fed's change in direction. Firstly, the release of the May Consumer Price Index CPI on June 13 confirmed the ongoing decline in inflation. The headline CPI is currently at its lowest point in over two years, 4%, driven by falling energy prices and less upward pressure from food prices. For example, egg prices have dropped by 14% compared to last year. More importantly, core CPI, which excludes volatile food and energy prices and serves as a guide for monetary policy, continues to moderate. Core inflation has reached its lowest level since November 2021, benefiting from decreases in core services such as airfare and recreation. The May PPI was released June 14, and that provided good news as well. The significant decline in the PPI suggests further improvement in CPI during the second half of the year. Although home prices and rents remain concerning, recent indicators suggest that relief may be on the horizon. While inflation is moderating, it still remains uncomfortably high. In addition to declining inflation, the decision to pause is supported by signs of economic deceleration. Manufacturing activity has been contracting for over six months, and business investment has noticeably declined. Manufacturing production in the U.S. decreased 0.3% year-on-year in May 2023 after falling 0.8% in April. However, it's important to note that a Fed pause does not necessarily mean a permanent halt. Pressing the pause button is not equivalent to hitting the stop button. The latest projections from Fed officials indicate an expectation of two additional quarter-point hikes, a total of 0.50% this year. Now let's take a look at the week ahead. Here are the salient economic reports to watch in the coming days. Housing starts Tuesday. Fed Chair Jerome Powell testifies to a House panel Wednesday. Initial jobless claims, existing home sales. Powell testifies to a Senate panel Thursday. S&P flash U.S. Services and Manufacturing PMI Friday. I just described reasons why you should remain bullish. 
However, if you're still nervous about the market risks I've just described, I suggest you consider the advice of my colleague, Robert Rapier. As chief investment strategist of Rapier's Income Accelerator, Robert has developed strategies that make money in bull or bear markets. Robert Rapier can show you how to squeeze up to 18 times more income out of dividend stocks with just a few minutes of work each week. For details, click the URL at the bottom of the article that accompanies this video on the Investing Daily website. Well, that's it for now. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to send an email to me at mailbag at investingdaily.com. Thanks so much for watching.